Well, we're going to have to get them out of their wet clothes. We're going to have to get them wrapped in a warm blanket. We're not going to give them a warm shower. Okay, but we got to treat them really gently. And we won't give them anything to eat or drink. That's good. So how'd we do? I, I think we did a really good job. I had a difficult time tracking that, uh, that crate, though. It was pretty deep in the water and, and uh, really hard to see. You can't see it from the, from the wheelhouse? No, but it, that was a big help having you in the companion way and, and, and shouting directions. Plus, I could look out the wheelhouse door and see mm -hmm. Carla pointing. Yeah, you did a great job pointing to that person and not losing track of them in the water. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, let's log this drill, but before we log the drill, let's put the gear away. Okay. Remember, a drill is not over until it's debriefed and logged. Drill 3, flooding. Flooding is common at sea, and it happens quickly. 20% of fishing vessel losses are due to flooding. A 3-inch hole 2 feet below the water line will let in 250 gallons a minute. One way to start a flooding drill is to place a piece of cardboard with the word flooding on it in a location such as the bilge or lazarette. When the crew finds the sign, the drill starts. This will also reinforce the idea of regularly checking these spaces. Flooding drill! We've got a flooding drill! You could also start the drill by testing the general and high water alarms. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Make a simulated call for help on the radio. We've got a flooding problem. Quickly find ways to plug the hole with whatever is available to slow the rate of flooding. Every vessel should have a damage control kit. Your crew should know where all through hull fittings are located. Close watertight hatches. Pump the water out. Everyone should be able to operate the dewatering pumps, whether your own or delivered by the Coast Guard. This is the time to make sure your own pumps work. If you use gasoline pumps below decks, be sure to vent all carbon monoxide. Use all extra pumps and even buckets to dewater. Beware of entrapping people. Do whatever you can to improve stability and watertight integrity, including tossing fish and gear overboard, clearing freeing ports, limiting free surface effects in tanks and on deck, and maneuvering into the seas. Prepare survival equipment in case you have to abandon ship. As with all drills, you should debrief. Talk about how the drill could have been better and discuss operations of pumps or other safety gear. Well, how do you guys feel the flooding drill went? Oh, I think it went great this time. It was nice to have everything in one place in that DC kit so we could get at it. You know, I think we should get a socket driver that's exactly the right size for the hose clamps. Oh, how about some of that underwater epoxy? Oh, that would be nice. That would be real nice. One thing about the dewatering pump, the hose needs to be a little bit longer so we can get it all the way down into the bilge. 
All hands should participate in the drill and don't forget to log it. Drill 4, Abandoned Ship. A fishing vessel is lost every 60 hours in the U.S. A well-practiced plan will greatly increase the chances of your crew's survival. Let your crew know that this is a drill. Abandoned ship can also be done as an extension of the fire or flooding drill. Abandoned ship drill! Get your gear now! Make a simulated Mayday call on the proper radio channel. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Be sure to include name, location, the nature of your problem, and the number of people on board. The fishing vessel Cherokee. We're outside Samsung Cove going down with four people aboard. Make sure all crew know how to find the proper radio channel and can determine the vessel's position. Critical points in an abandoned ship drill are to account for all crew members. The crew should gather flares, the abandoned ship kit, water and food, the logbook, and extra clothing if time allows. Watertight doors and hatches should be secured before abandoning the vessel. Everyone should be able to get into the right sized immersion suit in 60 seconds or less. Crews should assist each other with immersion suits. Different sized immersion suits should be easy to identify even in the dark. Life rafts are usually mounted where they fit, not where they're most accessible. The crew should know how to get to the life raft and how to launch it. Make sure the crew knows how to recover one too. All the crew should know how to operate the vessel's EPIRB. Do not activate the EPIRB during your drill. This is also a good time to test your EPIRB and log it as well as check your survival suit. Okay, this is how you test the EPIRB. Push it over to where it says test. All right, then while we're at it, we'll check the battery date, and then we'll check our lights on each of our each other's suits. Again, debrief the drill. Talk with your crew about what can be done better. Well, how did it go? Could any of the gear been more accessible? No, I think it was fine, but I know I'm going to have to mark my emergency suit bag so I can tell it from the other bags. Yeah, boy, those plastic bags made, my, made it really easy to get into my suit. I'd have to agree. Check, maintain, and properly store all safety gear in an accessible location after the drill. Log the drill. Remember, this video is not a substitute for doing drills. Your crew will remember more with hands-on learning than by just talking or watching a videotape.